Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-39. Last episode, we found Grish punching out a subordinate guard and fleeing Saydown on the Flying Porpoise. Tensions were high as the Cleric and Yolanda the Fighter seemed to have a secret between themselves. We rejoin the group on the deck of the ship as it moves across the water towards the east. Any guesses? queried Brother Stance of the Verte Order as he sat on the main deck of the vessel. Sir Omel, Phidias, and Harris the Mage all stared at Grish, who was berating the captain of the ship and was in quite a foul mood. Nope, responded the Knight of Bacchus. Certainly something has him in a tizzy, though. If Yolanda were here, I'd hazard she could enlighten us. The wizard spoke up, asking if anyone had seen her this morning, but received only negative shaking heads. Whatever happened last night really put a gap between the two, Harris continued. As if on cue, the Denali fighter exited the lower levels of the ship and caught Grish lambasting the captain. Shaking her head, she wandered over to the group and greeted them. Any idea where we're headed? She posed to the group. Sir Omel spoke. No, we were hoping you could enlighten us, though. The fighter slumped her shoulders, and the group felt as though she were being genuine about her response. After a few moments, Omel spoke again. Not to pry, my dear, but when we left Saydown, you two seemed to have a bit of a... How do I put it? A tiff. Is there something we should know about? Yolanda watched Grish storm to the front of the ship, eagerly anticipating a landing at the ground on the horizon. Pursing her lips, she thought for a moment, and then addressed the group. As you well know, Grish and I have had our... differences. The group collectively nodded, and she went on. I used to be a guard for the Denali King until Pellet rose to the throne, and had Grish eject me from the ranks. My opinion then, just like it is now, is that King Pellet is an idiot and can rot in the Seven Hells. I have never agreed with the style or outlook that cost me a job that I dearly loved. It would seem, at this time, which Grish too is having second thoughts on his beloved monarch. Something is obviously afoot, but I do not know the details. Him punching out Santos back in town clearly indicates that there is a rift. Harris broke in and asked her what she meant by that. She nodded and continued. The Green Guard is a well-trained group of elite fighters that Grish himself oversaw. One of his favorite teachings is that you never touch another person unless you are prepared to fight them. Santos grabbing Grish was a horrible breach of etiquette, and clearly a stupid one on the lieutenant's end. The second clue is our rapid departure from Saydown. We only had a few hours of rest before jumping aboard this ship and leaving. Finally, we are headed east. Phidias looked at his compatriots and shrugged. Okay, I give. We are going east. So what? Puzzled, Yolanda looked at the group who clearly didn't understand. Once she realized again that they were not from Denali, she shook her head. I'm sorry, you do not know. There is nothing but strange beasts and a small mining town in the eastern lands. It is also where King Pellet is rumored to have come from as he lived out a humble life in anonymity. We are clearly not following the coastline where Tigo's Vale resides. It is my belief that Grish is headed to the eastern interior to seek out answers. Probably the origin of King Pellet. If he has any doubts on this fearless leader, it would give him a test of faith, which he clearly would not enjoy. Omel noticed a thin smile cross her lips and asked, But you do not seem bothered by such unusual events. She promptly hid her smile and pointed out that she was glad Grish was finally getting on board with the idea. King Pellet is an ass, and a false ruler if I ever saw one. 
For years, we and the Guard had been told that King Bador had no heirs, except for possibly a few bastard children. When he arrived and presented evidence that he was next in line, many of us questioned this, but the sages present authenticated his claim to the throne. While I spoke out against his installation, it is what most likely led to my dismissal. Personally, I think he's an imposter. Stance, Harris, and Omel looked puzzled at the new information, but went expressionless as Phidias pointed out that Grish was headed this way. My friends, we should be landing at the coast in less than an hour. I should tell you that much of this land is untamed and unknown hazards may await us. He looked at Yolanda and offered an apology but was only greeted by an emotionless nod from the fighter. Sir Omel spoke. Grish, what are we doing here? Did you feel the need to throw your life into the path of danger so quickly again? Poor Phidias here only managed to snag a few items from the merchants in the city. The group scoffed and Grish responded. My apologies, dear friends. I have to handle the daily prayers before we land. Once we have reached solid ground, I promise to explain everything a bit better. He turned to find his quarters, but turned back to Yolanda. I am sorry, warrior. I truly am. He then moved quickly to go below deck for his devotions. The group shrugged at the strange interaction, and Omel suggested that they pack some food for the trip and perhaps grab some extra water skins. I'm not sure where we're going, but I'm certain we'll need some supplies. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening. <laughs>